we will uh, start. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. We are now in the in the almost middle of the day, and uh, I have a pleasure to to introduce uh, Andrea Sosa from Uruguay, which uh, who will be the the chair of this uh, invited talk uh, number five. Um, which is, uh, well, devoted to a very interesting topic, but uh, better is the speaker uh, to talk about Stellarium. So, Andrea, is your session. Thank you very much um, for accepting be, be the chair. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beatriz. And good morning, afternoon, or evening to all. And welcome to the fifth invited talk of the symposium. Uh, I First, I want to deeply thank uh, Beatriz and the rest of the local committee uh, for organizing this great meeting and the opportunity to be here. Now it's, uh, it's an honor and a pleasure to introduce Gior uh, Soti, and apologize for the pronunciation. Uh, Gior is computer scientist and astronomer with a lifelong interest for the role of astronomy in history and culture. He is working at the Luigi Boltzmann Institute for Archaeological Prospection and Virtual Archaeology in Austria. You might be using his work without knowing it, because he is one of the voluntary developers of Estelarium. Uh, in my modest opinion, I think that Estelarium is an amazing, beautiful computer program that combines art and a culture with the science of astronomy in a sublime way. As one of the countless users and fans of Estelarium, I am grateful, very grateful to Gior, Gior and the rest of the developers for this free software that has become a basic tool for so many professional astronomers, amateurs, teachers, educators, and students around the world. Uh, now, without further delay, uh, Gior, the stage is yours. Yes, thank you very much, Andrea, uh, for this kind introduction. Good morning to Argentina and the Americas. Good afternoon to Europe and Africa, and good evening to Asia and Australia. Um, yes, let me give you a short outline of my talk. I'm going to talk about Stellarium, which may be the perfect learning and teaching and outreach tool. Uh, give you some facts about its development. And the core part of my talk will be about uh, my uh, core interest, which is the development of virtual archaeoastronomy. That means the combination of architecture, the landscapes, and skyscapes. Um, this goes as far as that we have made a large exhibition where I used Stellarium in an outreach context where we had 100 square meters of a projection screen that we filled with uh, astronomical uh, data and information. Um, after some further highlights, I will also point out the sky culture features and uh, maybe some other uh, nice details. So I guess most of you know Stellarium already. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, it's a multi-platform application running on Windows, Linux, and Apple Macintosh. It provides a pretty sky simulation where we, you can also switch on particular uh, diverse projections like stereographic projections or cylindrical projections to give you a wide, very wide angle view. Um, you can exchange the constellation patterns, so not only show the European sky, but also show the sky of other cultures, which can be a very interesting add-on for cultural research and cultural outreach. Um, you can immerse yourself into a particular observing location by adding a photo horizon. Um, you can extend Stellarium. If this is not enough for you, uh, Stellarium is completely open source. That means uh, as somebody who is able to program, you can look into the source code, uh, see how it works. And if something doesn't work as you think it should work, you can correct it. You can add your additions. Uh, add your corrections and uh, also implement other things that maybe we have not yet done uh, if that fits to your to your uh, requirements believe it or not stellarium started 20 years ago in the summer of 2000 fabian chero as a student started this project and he gathered a small handful of developers around the globe and they made stellarium um, stellarium's look and feel um, until 
uh, about uh, 2012. I started around 2010 uh, in, in uh, adding and, and uh, fixing things. Uh, and now, when we see our uh, GitHub account, we can say we have about 10 major contributors to the whole development. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we are only two developers, which is really very, very few. Uh, this is Alexander Wolf, who is the maintainer. He's in Russia, in Barnaul, and I am in Vienna, in Austria. Uh, the two, uh, the founder and his brothers, so Fabien and Guillaume Chéreau, uh, have started on with their next project, the Stellarium Web. It's a, a sort of um, Stellarium that runs in your web browser. Uh, it is not as feature complete yet, but this may, of course, change over the next couple of years. Uh, there are about 18,000 commits by almost 200 contributors in code. Uh, and this is the statistics from uh, a website that says we have over 900,000 lines of code. Stellarium is translatable, is, has been translated to over 90 languages by more than 300 translators. We're using a, a free online web service for that, Transifex, and you also may help with that. And I also thank our, uh, our almost 600 financial supporters. There is a donation website. Uh, this really helps a bit in uh, getting some costs for licenses for new hardware and stuff like this. Stellarium has quarterly releases, so four, four releases per year approximately, which are being downloaded by 400 to 700,000 users per release. So we have, since 2017, when we moved to GitHub, we have about five and a half million downloads, which is quite a lot, I must say. Um, speaking of translation, this is where you, all of you, can help. If you see that your own language is not complete yet, you can just... Um, um, Turn, uh, turn up at, at, at Transifex and say, uh, I'm able to translate from English to my own language. And I think a software that also runs in your own language is a very nice uh, thing to have, even if, if it's, especially if it's a minority language. Uh, this is really nice if such a program also runs in any other language of the world. If there is a language that we do not yet support, just call us and uh, Alexander can add this as well. But please then really do translate it and not stop after 10 words. The night sky is a wonderful thing. It seems almost alive and it must have inspired people since uh, deep into prehistory. And it should not be, uh, you should not be surprised that many cultures, almost all cultures, have, uh, have built some, uh, what, what appears to be ritual places, temples, with very, very frequently um, celestial orientation, taking in the, take that into account, uh, something like solstice or take the moon or even take the planet Venus into account. And this is the, the realm of archaeoastronomy. Now, you can, also, you can always go to such a location and say, I observe now the sunrise when it is aligned with the temple axis. But uh, nowadays, we cannot uh, get the same thing that, we, uh, that people saw thousands of years ago. Why don't we have to simulate the sky then? First of all, some archaeological sites are fragile, so you are not allowed to go there for, for uh, long times, um, and you're not allowed, and, and you should not be required to disturb such a site. And then, especially the past sky cannot even properly be observed. You all know that we have precession, that means the stars are shifting parallel to the ecliptic, and that also shifts the rising and setting positions of the stars. And uh, therefore, if there is some idea that some temple window has been oriented towards the rising point of some particular star, this will not work after just a few hundred years. So we need to compute that back. And we have stellar proper motion. There's a similar problem. A handful of bright stars really have uh, moved perceivably since antiquity. And then finally, of course, there's the big problem of, of light pollution um, that also changes very much the appearance of the night sky. And finally, um, of course, a simulation allows you to speed up your research. You don't have to put up your tent there and camp for one year to observe the solar course or camp there for 20 years to observe some, some, uh, some more about the lunar cycles, maybe. You can do these simulations within just a couple of minutes. But of course, you need a good simulation engine for that. So what are the requirements for astronomical accuracy for such historical applications? You need, of course, proper models. And uh, one, one 
important thing, especially when it comes to eclipse simulation, is of course the delta T correction. That means Earth is slowing down, and uh, Stellarium is pretty unique, I think, in that you can use from one of more than 30 models uh, from various papers uh, to allow uh, uh, selecting this delta T correction. I've implemented uh, precession and obliquity following the long-time model of Bontrag, which is excellent. Um, and all, I also implemented notation. So that means Earth rotation is pretty well uh, captured now. For the planet positions, since, uh, since its beginnings, Stellarium uh, is, is using the VSOP87, which has a recommended date range of about 4, 000, uh, minus 4,000 to plus 8,000. Um, and we also made now a mode where you can read the JPLT E430 and 431 planet positions that provides the, the 431 provides planet positions from minus, from the years minus 13,000 to plus 17,000. So that really covers quite a lot of human history and future. What is not yet complete, unfortunately, is an accurate lunar physical ephemeris. Um, if I find time again, I will work on that. Um, that means the, the, the moon will show parts of its back face when you are uh, uh, simulating antiquity. Of course, it's nonsense. We know that. And uh, well, this should be fixed uh, in the next months, hopefully. And finally, if you are observing lunar occultations, we have not yet implemented aberration. That means uh, the, the lunar occultation times will be about one minute off. But also, again, um, I hope there is uh, we, have, uh, we have ideas how to fix that. Also, a good program needs a good uh, user guide. We have uh, we, are, we are now um, looking that the user guide is always up to date, uh, always mentions all the current features and limitations. So, if you have any questions, please first look, first look into the user guide and only then uh, report a possible bug if you think something is behaving weird. When you're observing, when you're simulating the sky in Stellarium, you can surround yourself with a landscape simulation that can be um, just a, a measured line, like this red line that runs over your screen, or you can add a photographic horizon. Um, you can just make a couple of photographs, stitch those together with some panorama stitcher, align that with the horizon, and then you have really a very accurate proxy for your, for your real horizon that gives a very good immersive feeling. You can also make artificial horizons with um, extra software. This is not, not in our realm, but uh, there's one very good program by Andrew Smith in Australia. He makes, uh, he, can, he can export stellar, stellar, Stellarium landscapes from the SRTM models. That's a very good one. I uh, developed a workflow where you can use Google Earth imageries uh, to stitch your own landscape. Now, still, uh, such a horizon has, uh, lim has its limitations. You can, if you have just one, one viewpoint, um, you can surround yourself with a horizon like this. But uh, this horizon captures the, the faraway mountains and, of course, also the vicinity, also the, uh, your, your local environment. But if you move a couple of meters to the next site that you may be interested in, of course, the horizon changes. So you need to make another panorama. And that's fine if you have just one or two positions uh, to investigate and you just make one or two panoramas and all is fine. But if you need to investigate a building, a larger complex, some monument with building access, windows, uh, some corridors that you want to investigate, this is not enough. And therefore, one of the developments that we have added is a real 3D mode in Stellarium that allows you to load 3D models into the artificial sky these models have to be created with uh, uh, other software. For instance, you can use landscape models from some GIS system or maybe some modeler like SketchUp. Uh, on top of that, you have to add, add some model. You can also uh, make a building model from an archaeological map, or you can use a laser scan model or image-based models. Uh, there are many ways uh, how to create those. The format that we need is the uh, old, quite old-fashioned, very, very well-known OBJ format. Um, if you know, it, it has to have real-world coordinates, and then you can use that in the software. And this allows you to really play now with uh, um, famous sites like this uh, so-called snake phenomenon at the El Castillo pyramid in Chichen Itza. Or you can uh, 
experience sunrise and sunset in maybe Egyptian temples, which are oriented with um, solstices, or walk around the most famous Stonehenge and uh, look what you can find there. Um, we have used this in research around um, Adrian's villa in Tivoli. There was the so-called Antinoeion, and we could show very clearly that the main axis of this temple has been oriented towards the sunrise point at summer solstice uh, behind the mountains. Of course, the mountains are always uh, necessary to take into account here. It's not enough to just have the temple plan. Coming to another very famous site, you've seen this already yesterday. Uh, Chanquillo is one of the oldest monuments in the Americas, which is uh, devoted to solar observation. It is from the third century before Christ. And I was able to use the LIDAR data from, from Clive Ruggles and Ivan Getzi. Uh, here you see the, the central uh, mountain ridge with these 13 towers. And when you're standing on one particular location on the temple corner, at the end of a corridor, you see the, uh, the sun, the rising sun covers this uh, span of the 13 towers uh, over the course of the year. So this, there may be some sort of calendrical use for this view. Um, this is now a capture taken within Stellarium. You see the, the, how huge this landscape may be. There is a fortified temple overlooking this site. And now we're flying, coming close to this uh, central ridge. Uh, with two, the minutes, two minutes left, excuse me. How many? Two okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, if you turn around and observe the, su the sunset uh, from a particular spot again in the in the landscape, uh, you will not believe that this is uh, this, this spot, the building place has been chosen arbitrarily. There must be some connection with uh, with the setting sun here. Testing accuracy. Uh, I tried to I, I received the laser scan from Heritage Malta, and as you, see, as you can compare a photograph, the laser uh, the, the, the laser scan simulation um, and the shadows in the real photograph are very very close. You can combine Stellarium um, with the game engine, so I implemented a mode where if you need some more interaction like this, if you want to observe. Uh, if you want to use virtual observation instruments um, with a Unity game engine, you can have now a real background, real uh, sky background uh, to, to combine that. We used Stellarium in a major exhibition about Stonehenge uh, in the Mammoth Museum of Prehistory in Mistelbach. Uh, we had replica of the Stonehenge horseshoe, and behind that we had a 25 by 4 meters screen with five projectors where we transported, uh, I made a, a scripted show and transported the, the narration and the message um, about Stonehenge. Here you see some impressions of this exhibition. And for this mode, we also used, uh, developed a remote control web interface. That means now you don't uh, uh, need to show the graphical user interface on the screen, but you can take that on with, for instance, a tablet computer. And this allowed us also to make nightly tours for children, which are very popular. Uh, it was a very nice thing, a flashlight tour. Uh, we also had a, a, we had a tour guide and some man from the past here in the center of the image who uh, told the children, of course, in his own language, uh, also with dancing and singing and, and acting. And so, uh, suddenly the, the uh, morning twilight set in and he uh, made some ceremonies to greet the rising sun, the summer solstice. A few more highlights. Um, we see uh, lunar eclipse comparison. If you want to simulate lunar eclipses, this works, I think, very well. For solar eclipses, uh, very current topic. Uh, this is a, a combination of some photographs that I made in Mongolia in 2008. And we all would have liked to see the solar eclipse uh, next Monday. Um, only a few, few of you will be able to do that. A solar eclipse, I, I know, the webcam will nothing uh, will be nothing like the eclipse and also the simulation is nothing like the eclipse um, the real thing is just much much nicer um, i added comet tails just to give you a few impressions how you how to simulate comets also i think donati is pretty nicely modeled um Ikeyaseki, for instance we cannot model Things like this. So Comet McNaught was really unique uh, in its appearance. Um, after comets, we have 
uh, meteors, of course, comet debris. Um, we can model, we can show um, sporadic meteors, meteor showers with a uh, complete plug-in. Um, and we have not yet a simulation for real fireballs, but we can show you something like this. Here, the meteor shower and also the zodiacal light below that. If you say a bright um, moonlit night is nothing where you can observe, then I just say, well, go into different wavelengths. Uh, Stellarium is capable of accessing the HIPS surveys uh, for non optical wavelengths. And uh, well, with this, Simulation. I also want to say farewell to a wonderful instrument that uh, you know we have lost only a couple of days ago, the Aristipo radio telescope, and with the radio sky uh, behind this on the sky of Stellarium. We can show supernovae. Um, of course, it's nice to have that in context uh, when you have a supernova report, uh, a historical supernova record, for instance, from China. It's nice to show that with the Chinese constellations. And this brings me to my last topic, the Stellarium Sky Cultures. Uh, you know, the current uh, situation is that the IEU has only uh, defined these borders. Most amateur astronomers instead know these stick figures or maybe know the artistic renditions. Um, we have also, um, we can also show asterism. These are unofficial figures, only consisting of line art or what we call the ray helpers. These the, are the long lines that help orienting in the sky. But we cannot only show uh, the western skies, or maybe some uh, Arab variant, which is also just Ptolemaic, but uh, we show the Ojibwe, for instance, has a lizard where we have the bear, or we have uh, Belarus, uh, the wagon, which is also popular in, in German-speaking countries, it's all the same. Uh, but there's room for improvement, we know that. Uh, we do not yet have the lunar stations, for instance, uh, I'm very aware of that shortcoming. We cannot at the moment show dark constellations, the emo in the sky formed by clouds in the Milky Way. Um, and we need especially better descriptions for cultural background. So this, the, the sky cultures are community contributions and we need really very good descriptions. Also concerning translation, it's not easy to translate uh, cultural things, not easy, especially for the two of us. Uh, and we really need well-researched sky cultures with good references, not with a web link that vanishes after a year we would have, uh, we would like to have very, really good information for that. And uh, this will, of course, this, this uh, is also linked to re review and quality assurance issues. Uh, so if you are able to participate in, in the project, uh, either with contributing sky cultures or uh, also contributing your own research topics, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us at, the, at our GitHub site. And of course, uh, if possible, we would prefer funded collaboration. With this, I say thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and now we have uh, five minutes to questions. I'm going to read some questions from, from the audience. Uh, yes. uh, Sean Brick says, uh, the, la the latest versions of Stellarium seems to have more demanding requirements for graphics and will not run, for example, on some older laptops. Can you explain about the advantage of the newer graphics requirements, as I am sure exist? Estelarium is one of our very most wonderful current tools for astronomy education. Um, well, the, the graphic requirements have, have not really changed since uh, maybe 2015 or so. Um, there are some basic requirements uh, we need. We, we are, we are, uh, Basing our work on the on the cute uh, environment, that is a, a graphical tool, uh, a GUI toolkit, and a, and a C++ class library, uh, and this requires uh, a minimum support for OpenGL 2.1 or uh, OpenGL ES. Um, so, if um, if this question is concerning Windows, if if uh, your computer is reasonably young, my oldest computer that I used the learn with is from 2008. So, um, of course, um, you, you have to use a, a reasonably modern system. Um, but Stellarium also runs on, the, on the just a tiny Raspberry Pi uh, computer that costs something like 50 euros. So um, I don't think there is a big, um, um, there's a big gap here. Uh, we have a YouTube questions from Christian Goes. Tara, is there any way to indicate the vernal points without having to indicate ecliptic and celestial equator? 
as well as indicate the galactic center in a stellarium? Uh, but the, 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 the burning point is, uh, is a marker that you can just activate. Uh, it's uh, in, the, in, the, uh, uh, in, the, in the page in the GUI where you select all the grid lines, there's also a particular column for a particular points, so the, the vernal points, the uh, solstices. Um, I'm not sure about the galactic center, but I also think it's there. Uh, we have another question. Uh, this Stellarium usage examples are all very nice. Can they also be highlighted on the Stellarium website? Uh, which, which highlights? Sorry. Uh, the question is from uh, Sio Lang. Excuse me. Uh, I, I can repeat what he, he says. Uh, maybe some, someone from the local committee can help me with this question. Uh, maybe I, I can I can answer this in in written okay uh, in written form. Um, okay. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't get with which which uh, example you mean you mean. Uh, I don't know. I'm just reading the question. Uh, we have another question from Walter Guevara. They, uh, what programming languages is Stellarium code written? The most thing is C++. Uh, parts of it, the astronomical parts, is partially in C. Um, and um, the, the user language, so the scripting language, is, is JavaScript. Well, we have many comments, uh, nice comments to Stellarium. Um, are uh, still a question remaining uh, from Beatriz. Uh, it's a, it, he, she asked, which are the difficulties you found for the web development of Stellarium, if any? Um, well, Stellarium is a, is a unique uh, mix of, you need uh, many, um, well, um, knowledge about many things, uh, about computer graphics on the one hand, about astronomy on the other hand. And also if you're dealing with cultural aspects, then of course you need to uh, go into, into um, cultural knowledge as well. Um, so of course the, the, the sky culture thing is, uh, um, is also yet another combination. So Stellarium, but also cultural astronomy in, in, gen in general is, uh, requires knowledge of, of, of more than one field, definitely. Um, but it, it's really nice if you if you if you combine those skills, then you can really make a difference here. Uh, um, I don't call myself uh, a qualified ethnologist, for instance, but um, um, well, I know something about computer graphics and something about astronomy as well. Well, we have one comment and a question from Claudio Pastrana: uh, Stellarium for mobile phones. It is a marvelous and amazing tool for students in high school. Sadly, we all understand cannot be free, but thank you very much for all your hard work. Well, it's a comment, sorry. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, well, there are very nice comments about your work. Um, Uh, well, I, I passed the comments because there are so many, and I, I'm looking forward to, uh, for some questions. I, I don't find. Um, uh, I, I asked for uh, help from the local committee in case I miss uh, a, a questions. I am reviewing the questions. Uh, yes, there's there are some questions uh, from C. Liung Cheng. That okay. was the question that we have uh, some problem with it. Uh, he said. I mean, all the examples was given in this talk, they are all very interesting, but I'm not aware of them highlighted on the Stellarium webpage. Would it okay. be possible to do so, so that uh, more people are aware of the possible advanced features? We have, we have just a, a paper in completion that will be, uh, will be an, an open app come to the website, hopefully pretty soon. Uh, but thank you for suggesting that. Uh, but I, I mentioned many of these examples also in that paper. Well, it, it seems there is no more questions uh, to read. Um, well, so thank you very much for this inspiring talk. Okay. Can I see? Thank you.